I'm going to spend a couple minutes talking about El Onizuka because uh, he's your hometown boy and we're honoring him and his memory and the rest of the Challenger crew around this time. It will be the 25th anniversary of losing Space Shuttle Challenger. We're trying to mark that anniversary by talking about the Challenger and, and celebrating their contribution to the space program. And I know that the Challenger accident was 25 years ago. Obviously, uh, none of your students uh, were here. It was a really uh, big deal in this country, and uh, anybody who is an adult or even a teenager at that time will remember uh, uh, the accident. So uh, you should know about it, especially since uh, you have a hometown boy involved in it. So Ellison uh, grew up in the, the coffee fields of uh, Kona and uh, was not a, not a man of privilege. He, he went to the public schools. He uh, was a, a Boy Scout, an Eagle Scout, in fact, and uh, participated in, in 4-H. He went to the University of Colorado at Boulder, where he studied aeronautical engineering because uh, he had a love of flying. And in the Air Force, he became what was called a flight test engineer. And flight test engineers figure out how to make airplanes go faster and higher and, and, uh, and more maneuverable and uh, get higher performance out of aircraft. And it, uh, it allowed him to fly and, and uh, exert that, uh, that interest that he had in flying. He got selected by NASA in 1976 to be a, a, an astronaut. And after uh, training, he was uh, given his first mission in 1985, where they deployed a, uh, a military satellite and uh, L got uh, his first taste of, of weightlessness and uh, the incredible experience of being in space. He also got to look out the window and see some beautiful things, uh, including this uh, little island in the middle of the Pacific. And that's the big island where he's from. Uh, one of the marks of a very uh, successful astronaut, somebody who's doing very well in their career, is uh, you're given another assignment right away. And Ellison was given an assignment uh, quickly to fly on the Space Shuttle, Char space shuttle Challenger uh, in a mission called SSDS uh, 51L. 51L was going to be very uh, unique in that uh, not only did uh, Ellison get assigned to this, uh, but there were two civilians, non-professional astronauts on this flight. One's Greg Jarvis. Uh, he worked at Hughes Aircraft. He was a scientist, an engineer, and he was going to run some experiments for the company that he works for. And the other is uh, uh, Krista McAuliffe. She was a uh, elementary school teacher from New Hampshire. She was selected by in a program where they wanted to f they wanted to bring teachers into space to teach lessons from space and get school kids excited about about space. And uh, the excitement was great, and the anticipation was fantastic. About a week before launch, the crew flies from Johnson Space Center in Houston down to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and uh, uh, is at Ke the Kennedy Space Center preparing for their launch. It's a really exciting time. It really feels like, okay, now we're actually gonna go into space. It's, it's our time. So on launch morning, about five hours before launch, uh, the crew comes out uh, of the building where, where, we, uh, where we stay, the crew quarters building there, and uh, we wave to, there's a, a press there and photographers and stuff, and uh, we get in the van that takes us to the launch pad. T minus 15 seconds. 86. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Only in this little Roger, Roger. Roger. department up here, okay? And what nobody knows is that there's a little Challenger hole now heading down in, range. This, in this uh, solid rocket booster, and that hole is letting all this hot gas escape out of it, and it's heading towards the external tank. Engine's beginning throttling down now and the more that at 94%. Moves, Normal throttle uh, for most of the flight, 104%. Hot exhaust is uh, escaping that solid rocket. We'll throttle down to uh, 65% shortly. Okay, we engines at 65%, three engines uh, are running normally, three good fuel cells, three good ABUs. In the atmosphere because it'll be too much stress in the vehicle. Velocity 2257 feet per second, altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. We're going to talk about throttle on this. We actually want to go faster once we've... Uh, gone past the thickest part of the atmosphere. Engine's throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, nine nautical miles. Downrange distance, seven nautical miles. 
So the gas that was escaping from that solid rocket booster had gotten so hot and so intense that it actually broke a, a, a strut, broke a, a, a connecting piece between the shuttle and the liquid tank and, uh, and the solid rocket booster. And solid rocket booster broke apart. It punctured the tank, and the tank uh, exploded, of course. And we lost all seven astronauts on that day. It's 20, 25 years ago this, this Friday. And anybody who is, uh, can remember that time uh, certainly remembers where they were and, and how the country reacted to, uh, to that tragedy. But what we did was uh, we figured out that problem. We figured out how to fix those solid rocket boosters. And uh, about two, two years, uh, two and a half years later, uh, we got flying the space shuttle again. The Challenger was the 25th mission of the space shuttle. And uh, next month, we'll fly the 133rd mission of the space shuttle. So we've had uh, a, a successful uh, run of missions uh, on the space shuttle. At, uh, we're reminded, of course, that space flight is dangerous. We, we lost the space shuttle Columbia eight years ago also, eight years ago on Tuesday. And uh, so we're reminded how dangerous space flight is. Uh, but uh, I think if you ask any of the astronauts, it's worth it. And uh, the, the contributions we're making to space and the knowledge of how to fly in space uh, is growing with every mission.